Hoyoverse, or more commonly known as their previous name, MiHoYo. This was a company that created the now famous, or infamous, Genshin Impact. Their early motto was, Tech Otaku Saved the World. I can't say for sure if they saved the world, but they damn sure had an impact on it. MiHoYo launched their first game in 2011 called Fly Me to the Moon. It's insane to think that this was their start, but they already took up the mantle of an anime-focused art style even then. It's crazy to think that we went from a flying lolly to this hot pyro mommy, but this was their start. This game would inevitably fail, however, they were bringing in a massive income of 4,000 Chinese yuan on a monthly basis, which in today's economy is about $500. MiHoYo was by no means a titan that they are now, but this all changed when they got an investment of 1 million yuan, or roughly $140,000 from a Chinese company, Hangzhou Sky Network Technology. This was MiHoYo's only outside funding and the start of their enterprise. By taking advantage of certain circumstances and having the ability to pull ahead in the gaming industry, they would remain the best gacha company on the market for years to come. My name is Void Enigma, and I'll be explaining how Genshin Impact became the monopoly that it is today. Now, there was only one more game in between Fly Me to the Moon and the next giant, and that would be Hokai Gaken 2, to which was a big project for the seven people who were running MiHoYo. If you think Hokai Gaken 2 sounds familiar, well, you'd be right. They had many bugs and glitches, and to fix this, they eventually hired their own players. Astonishing, right? The game launched on 2013, and in the same year, they started the development for their next big game. This game would spawn many of the best-known characters to this day, like Raiden Mei, Branya, and Yai Miko. Honkai Impact 3rd, or maybe the third Hokai Gakuen, would be a game that would take about three years to completely develop and it would launch worldwide on March 18th, 2018, but it was already available in China in early 2016. Honkai is truly MiHoYo's baby because it took them blood, sweat, and tears to create this game. They had no idea what they were doing and they were just starting with 3D modeling and to make Kiana, the main character's 3D model, it took them six months of work. They had to scratch their ideas many times to start over, but they eventually made it. This hard work would pay off because this game had massive success, and it felt like it was ahead of its time. MiHoYo was able to really implement crazy games and ideas early, which led to their success. You'd think that anime gaming would belong in Japan, but MiHoYo cracked the code early on. Their small seven-man team now had over 200 employees, and they were steadily on the rise to success. There were a few projects between Honkai Impact 3rd and Genshin Impact, being Theories of Themis and a few communities that they were building up, but in 2017, they started the development for the best gacha game to ever grace the world, Genshin Impact. MiHoYo knew that they wanted an open-world game, but where would they start? Well, if Nintendo's Zelda Breath of the Wild were to never have come out, Genshin Impact might not have existed today. Kai Hyaoyu, MiHoYo's CEO and chairman at the time, played some Zelda, and, well, things began to take shape. They started the project with about 150 people, and that proved to be way too little to develop and create an open world game of this caliber, and would eventually come to hire over 500 people by the time that the game was released. The development for Genshin Impact would cost them over $100 million, and most of their budget was blown on the music. Money well spent, because you can be sure to remember many Genshin 2s even to this day. I remember browsing through YouTube as I played and quit my fourth gacha game and playing Ark Knights on the side when I saw a beta test for Genshin Impact on YouTube. Whoa, these characters look really good. This feels like a console open world game, but it's actually a gacha game with anime elements. This is way too good to be true, right? and you can even play it on your phone. This is a game that would have a global launch in 2020, and this would be worldwide. How else would you monopolize the market if you don't do it worldwide, right? This was just unheard of for many games, especially because the global version would always be released a year or two later, and then it would have to catch up to the Chinese version. But MiHoYo said, yeah, bet. 
Right smack dab in the middle of the game's release was the COVID-19 pandemic, and man, what a perfect time to launch your game. Genshin showed up like a hero in our time of need, and now you could be my hero with that like button. It helps out the channel more than you know, so it would be really great if you could hit that like button, and for more deep dives like this, hit that subscribe button as well. People were either forced to work from home or not work at all, which left everyone stuck in their homes. Some went on a journey of self-discovery while others were just dying of boredom inside, and guess who showed up to rescue them from their existential dread? You guessed it, massive amounts of loots, I mean, Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact took off immediately and I can't lie and say that I wasn't blown away by this game. Genshin made many people's careers today, especially all of the YouTubers who came up from Genshin Impact, and the monetization on it was perfect at the time for MiHoYo. That 100 million that it cost to make the game, well, they made that back in week one. It was genius timing. Everyone was locked inside with nothing to do except play games and interact with strangers on the internet. Genshin's growth was explosive as a Bennett elemental burst. Minus the bad luck, of course. For that year, the game was a way ahead of its time. You had a triple A exploration game, fully voice acted in many languages, and you could even play it on your phone. They made sure that everyone and anyone had the opportunity to pick up this game. Content creators were born from this game, and even I was late to the party as I started my channel based on Genshin Impact about a year after its release. With their success, they dropped their act of Tekotaku Save the World and rebranded to become what we know them as today, Hoyoverse, because the entire verse will be dominated by Hoyo. This rebranding was to reach a greater audience outside of China, and their new goal is to create and deliver immersive virtual world experiences for global players. With the next arc of Hoyo's journey set into full swing, the COVID launch saga, this is where their popularity skyrocketed. You're stuck inside all day, so you may as well explore Genshin for a few minutes. Holy shit, it's been three days. That was the average day for a Genshin explorer. Things were so good in Genshin Impact that they cultivated a relationship with their player base. No one could compete with their rapid growth and they would continue to grow. Other gacha games existed, but nothing on the scale of Genshin Impact. Even today, the only true competitors of Hoyoverse is Hoyoverse. And that's what leads us right into our next topic, the unavoidable consequence of Honkai Star Rail. You see, with the game being out for a year, people had issues with the game. Their monetization system, especially the weapon banner, quality of life updates, and there were many people who realized that Genshin wasn't the thing it was amped up to be. With the hype of the launch dying down, many people opened their eyes to the relationship that they had with this company. It was a purely transactional relationship, rather than one between a business and a loyal customer. Feedback got ignored for years, and their game remained just doing the bare minimum to stay afloat. And by stay afloat, I mean make millions upon millions of dollars every banner because at this point, Genshin was a drug that people could not pass up. With the stagnation of Genshin Impact, people began to feel like playing this game just was more of a chore. I mean, you've invested hundreds of dollars into this game. You'd be insane to quit it, right? Well, have you ever heard of Stockholm Syndrome? Yeah, me neither, because I'm still playing Genshin today despite my many problems with the game. After investing not only your money and time, but your lifestyle into logging in every day, doing your commission, spending your resin, people began to form a habit. A habit that was really hard to quit. The characters are so appealing and you just want more from this game, and even though you're not getting anything extra, you at least have your characters, right? Many people have pointed out in the comments from my previous videos that Genshin feels like an abusive relationship. They give you just enough to indulge you, but then you act surprised when they betray your trust. Now, Holyoverse would eventually fix all their issues, right? Of course, it takes time to fix issues and add quality of life features. And they did. They did so by creating a brand new game and adding all of those features there. Honkai Star Rail. Remember when I said that Honkai was MiHoYo's baby? Honkai Star Rail was an expansion on the Hoyo Monopoly and it was another booming success. Launched globally on April 26, 2023, this was the game for those who didn't want to commit hours to exploring and play a turn-based gacha game. Wait, you still have to commit hours to play daily? Oh, well, uh. 
Every quality of life wanted in Genshin was done in Star Rail. The gacha system, mainly the weapon banner having a rate of 75-25 in Star Rail. Meanwhile, Genshin's rate sat at 35-35-30, meaning you had a one-third chance to actually get the weapon. This sparked major controversy between the two communities because people wanted these amazing things in Genshin Impact. Not only that, but Honkai Star Rail added Endgame modes, the same request that was at the top of the list for many Genshin Impact players but was denied because Spiral Abyss caused excessive anxiety for casual players. That's all fine, I mean, it's not like Honkai is winning any rewards for, oh, they won mobile game of the year. Okay, well that's fine, it's not like they're gonna give you a free 5 star, oh, they gave you a free doctor ratio. You see, Genshin has won many of the same awards, if not more, in the first two to three years of the game, and never once were they graced with a free five-star character. And you're telling me that this game, ran by the same company, gives their players a free five-star? This was a brutal slap in the face for Genshin players, and this began to spread animosity between the players. So, you may be asking, why are people still playing Genshin despite them not listening to feedback or implementing changes? Well, they don't have to, you see. Genshin got big, so big in fact, that the people who were talking about the issues are the vast minority. Genshin tailored the experience for gaming to the casual population. Sure, any hardcore gamer can enjoy the game, but it's mainly focused on a casual gamer. They will pick up the game once a day, once a week, or even monthly, and they damn sure are not playing this game 24-7. To further emphasize and prove this point, another key feature, artifact loadouts, have been asked for for years by the player base. But instead of implementing that feature, they added a quick loadout. That way, new players wouldn't have to think about what to equip their new characters with. They could quickly gear up their characters with the best choices that exist on their account, and they could go in, do zero research, equip them with the best artifacts, and go out and have fun. In addition, their priorities have always been bringing in new players, and it just works from a business standpoint. But at the expense of the long-term player, which people just didn't like. Since they super tailor to a casual audience, they can ignore the feedback of all the players who take Genshin more seriously because they don't need them. Whales will still wail, and people will still play the game, simply for the fact that they don't care to voice their opinion, or they just outright quit and are replaced by the next sucker who decides to download the game. Another major contributing factor is the lack of competition. They had no one to compete with. Because they had no one to compete with, they made their own competition, which was their own game. People would flock to Star Rail, and then when they realized that they don't like turn-based games, they would go back to Genshin Impact, further solidifying the place as a monopoly. I mean, all this money is still going to Hoyoverse, so it doesn't matter if you spend on Genshin or Star Rail. As long as content kept coming on a six-week basis, the crowd of people talking about in-game issues would be drowned out by the hype of the new content. Hoyoverse has fostered a system where they can do whatever they want as long as they do not anger the Chinese player. They could continue to push out content and get massive stacks of money. Personally for me, Genshin has made three fatal flaws, two of which I can never forgive them for. One, they made Zhongli the worst Archon. Two, they designed the kit for Dia, the worst 5 star in the game as well as throwing her to the standard banner. And three, false representation in Notland for their deities to their playable characters. I won't go further into details about these three topics, but the first point, which is Zhongli, was saved thanks to the backlash inland in China, while the following two were a point made by the global audience and they were completely and utterly ignored. And even though I'm pretty sure that many people did quit playing the game because of this, Genshin will not falter. Until another player enters the arena. Wuthering Wave. Open world anime character designs, yeah, Wuthering Waves became Hoyo's lead competitor, and even though Wuthering makes nowhere near as much money as Hoyoverse, they definitely shook up MiHoYo's pockets. With Wuthering Waves release, people were leaving Genshin Impact in droves to play the next best gacha game. Some went back to Genshin, but many stayed in Wuthering. The difference between the games is what many people have been begging for. Every critique that Genshin left to gather dust, Wuthering picked up and polished. No wonder so many players jumped ship to the Wuthering waves. Many played both games even, but you can be sure that MiHoYo took notice to the large influx of players who vanished. 
Hoyoverse even had their new game coming out, Zenless Zone Zero. This was going to further their grand scheme of world gaming domination, but Wuthering was a major competitor that put them in their place. Despite having a good launch, ZZZ didn't blow up like Sorrow did because Wuthering Wave decided to release their update a week early to offset the release of Zenless. A term comes to mind when you think of Genshin Impact whenever you see the generosity of other games being far superior to their model. Genshin could never. This became a staple across every subreddit, YouTube video, or Twitter comment whenever you compare or talk about Genshin Impact. Genshin could never. And they were damn right because they really could never. They finally began to actually fix their game by copying the same features that Withering Waves used and increased the overall rewards to make Genshin more appealing. It's crazy how they changed their treasure tracker to be more useful and started dropping more primo gems and free 5 stars now that Withering Waves hits the land. They opened up the catalog of 4 years of feedback from players and they finally started doing what players have been asking for for years. They were determined to rid the world of the term, Genshin could never. With the release of Notland, however, Hoyoverse knew that this was a major turning point and they had to deliver. The last anniversary had the major sting of what happened with the controversy from the 3 years for 3 pulls meme, so they knew they had to step it up. And they did. They decided to give all of their players a free 5 star standard character. This was a great win for Hoyoverse, but I'm still disappointed that this is not a free limited character like they got in Honkai Star Rail, but I suppose it's a step in the right direction. They made so many changes in Notland to make their game overall better, like the artifact transmutation system, which is by the way a very shit system that used to die in the hill that it was raised, and the increase in world levels so that you can now get more drops from bosses and domains, and the increase in the 5 star rates at 55%. But all of these changes come with, you guessed it, major stipulations. Sneaky, sneaky Hoyoverse. And alas, Genshin could never. But back to the main point. Genshin is too big to fail. If any other fish enter the pond, all they have to do is expand their mouths to eat more prey by offering a few extra rewards and a few more perks, and bam, they have millions of players who will put up with it. It doesn't really matter what Hoyoverse does because they can always fail upwards. It wouldn't be a new feature if it wasn't complicated as all hell and back. There is not a single feature that recently came out in Genshin that is straightforward. They always have bells and whistles for any new feature, and that's actually insane. Why not make things simple? Like, why not just throw the players a bone from time to time? They have a way to just pull you in and make you think that something's great, and then when you read the fine print, you're just disappointed. With Genshin now owning over four gacha games on the market, their monopoly is established. They have spread out their updates at designated time to keep you playing their game at all times. You can always have something new to do if you're playing all three of four of these Hoyoverse games. The only ones who can stop Hoyoverse is Hoyoverse, but that begs another question. Why would you? Despite me saying all of these bold things, Hoyoverse has shown that they can change. When their business is threatened by a certain company, albeit, they can change. 5.0 marked a pivotal moment for Genshin, and it has proved to be a moment alright, because they went all in. They have finally decided to take the reins back and stop running on autopilot and actually make a game rather than run a machine. Is it too late for them though? Well, for many hardcore players, yes, but for the company, hell no. Again, the main topic of this video is how Genshin Impact became the greatest, and this is how. By appealing to a large, casual audience of diehard fans. So many people have integrated Genshin into their daily lives that it's impossible to stop now. If you go to any anime con in the world, it will be littered with Genshin Impact cosplayers and Genshin Impact merch. Genshin Impact is more than a game. It's a community, and that is truly a subtly beautiful thing. So, while I know the whole Tekotaku Save the Worlds was a load of bullshit, they have created a rather substantial space for themselves as a rebranded Hoyaverse. I hope they can do better and stop making everything about rules and stipulations and just make the game fun again. Go ahead and leave a comment down below on Hoyoverse's impact in your lives. This has been Void Enigma, and I hope that I have uncovered the enigma that is Genshin Impact. Make sure to like and subscribe for more amazing content, and as always, until next time, Enigma out.